My name is John Sjalm, uh, and I'm working at FOIT. FOIT is the Federal Office of Information Technology and Telecommunication. And um, we are the biggest IT service supply in the Swiss government. We have more than one. And now I wanted just to show you some figures, but now you have to keep that in mind. We are about 1,000 employees. We are, have more than 10 petabytes of data and uh, around 44,000 um, users. So my mother tongue is German and Rumansh. Because I thought to tell you that, also to rise, you know, the culture knowledge, not only the technology knowledge. So Rumansh is the fourth language in, um, in Switzerland. When we are taught, that was just a sample, and only 50,000 people on Earth are speaking this language. So this means statistically that only every 200 years a, a Romansh speaker is attending uh, the WSO2 conference. <laughs> so therefore, enjoy my English and maybe um, WS2 will integrate Romansh for scrambling data. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the slides. I hope that I get the slides. Yes, yes. yes. Thank you. So we already <laughs> went ahead. Can you go to the next slide? Ah, yes. So that's the fault. Um, but I can tell you, even without this feature, WSO2 has a lot of products and a big bunch of features. And one can almost say that WSO2 products relate to digital transformation as um, the Swiss Army knife to the MacGyver. But believe me, installation and message tracing is still a little a little bit more complex than using a Swiss army knife. And that's why I took these two topics as my topic for the um, talk today. Therefore, my talk is divided in three parts. The first one is ju just give an overview of the environment and some pitfalls. The second one is um, everything about automation and finally the message tracing. So, we have different platforms, and I introduced them already in San Francisco. Um, the name was Why Swiss Chocolate Relates on WSO2. That's why I also took Swiss chocolate with me, so you can taste and rise your sugar level. So, to understand that, you will see the first one, the first platform. We talk here about the project of 100 million Swiss francs, that's more or less 80 million uh, euros. And uh, the, major, um, the major challenge was here to integrate all these different uh, technologies. We have SAP, FileNet, Java, DomTrack, and so on. So this was quite challenging. The next was and it is used, the, the further uh, platform was used for the VAT, the value added tax. Now, this one is for the border authorities, and it's completely different because this landscape already exists since more than 10 years. And uh, so um, we had, we wanted just to substitute the existing product with another product, that means WSO2. Therefore, the main challenges here were the different protocols and also to integrate WebLogic Server. WebLogic Server is um, supporting distributed transactions and this requires XA architecture and XA architecture was not supported out of the box. Now you get it for free out of the box we, because we developed this feature together with um, WSO2 people. So both have a similar architecture. We have here an onion architecture. That means we have three layers, the outer layer, which is the API manager. This connects SOAP and REST 
um, for the different applications. We have internal and external applications attached to them. Why internal ones? The reason is because we th believe that um, API Manager is also a kind of living documentation, but maybe um, we can even improve this. So the second one is the inner one, and um, the inner layer is for JMS. That's, we do it with um, the message broker. And finally, we have the middle layer, which is done by ESB. That's the brain. It uh, routes the messages from, um, from the source to the target and makes also the, the transformation from JMS to SOAP and vice versa. So you, see, you have seen three products, Message Broker, JMS, and ESP. Now we have added even three more products, and that is the Identity Server. We added um, the Identity Server to make the access easier for the administration by introducing sing single sign-on. We added the DSS because our information for um, for the routing is in a database and we wanted uh, SOAP uh, service due to um, different reasons. One is we wanted to fill up this database automatically. And finally, we have also the DAS, the data analytics server. And the data analytics server is used for message tracing, which we, I will talk a little bit later. And also for business tracing due to uh, legal constraints. These are the products. So we have also more than one infrastructure set up. We have three ones. The, one, the simple one is everything on one box. So this is for development, so people can uh, program against this, uh, uh, this setup. Then we have a second one. This is the, for reference and test. It's the same one as the development, however, in a high availability manner. And finally, we have the third one. That's pre-production and production. And uh, we split the products up into four VMs. Why? Because we have constraints when it comes to transferring one VM from one data center to another one. It has to be below some minutes, and we were not able to do that with one single box. The other um, reason was also the different um, network zones. So now the pitfalls, of course, I'm aware we have a lot of pitfalls you can get in. And um, I don't understand a lot about pitfalls. I have then my chief developer there, it's Niels Eckert, he's with us. And he helped me a little bit with, with these uh, pitfalls. So I picked out three of them because of uh, time constraints. The first one is the API manager. Normally, you want to fan out horizontally. So you want to add one API gateway and another one if it's not enough. So what are you doing then? So you will add, but even if this API are indicated in the publisher as published, they're not published. So you have to republish them uh, again. That's also the same uh, if you just update the API gateway, then, then you have to republish again. And of course, if you have five APIs, it's not a big deal to do it manually. But believe me, with 50 APIs, it's a good deal to do it um, automatically. So that was one. It's important. The reason why I took this one is sometimes you had to be critical what you see. It's not everything what you see is also what is real, uh, in real um, world uh, turned on. So the second one is about the identity server. We heard al already a lot about identity server. It includes users, roles, everything around security. And you can also use this identity server as the key manager for the API server. 
So the problem is only if you already um, configured single sign-on and add the key uh, manager for the API, then you have to reconfigure again the single sign-on. Otherwise, it's not working. The reason why I tell you that is sometimes it can be that a configuration of one feature can have side effects on another feature. So pay attention also to this. And finally, the DAS, we were shocked the first time. We installed a new version and the data was gone. So we didn't see any data and we were shocked. But uh, that's why I also took this, um, this pitfall by re-indexing the data, it was fine again. So you see everything again, all the data. So you didn't uh, lose any data. That's important. Now we come to the automation. I uh, just want to give you some background first. Uh, we saw that we use six products. We have three different infrastructure setups. And believe me, all of them have to be engineered from scratch but because they are completely different. So um, it's important to keep them also in sync and this requires a, a method, a special method. So we developed uh, also this method. Then we have 12 stages. I mean, the, the problem is we have more than 100 developers which were working in this project. Now this project is live for two months, so we were very successful. And then we have also six network zones. So uh, it's obvious that uh, such uh, a complex uh, platform is difficult to, to uh, deploy with a uh, standard tool out of the box. Moreover, we have more than 1,000 customization. That means we had to cha make changes to XML or flat files or JSON files. So more than 1,000. And at the end, we had two uh, of the installation. We did also 100 REST calls. So the configuration, I mean, uh, what we think about when we say configuration is queues, um, users, roles, and so on. So we have now, f so far, 50 APIs and 80 subscriptions. Now, what before with, uh, we head on and say, yes, we will engineer something which is really, um, which will matter everything, we thought about what are our goals. We heard about, and I have had a discussion with Jackie uh, yesterday, and uh, we talked about adaptive, to be adaptive. And then she said, yeah, it's good to be adaptive. And I told her, I think Switzerland is very um, successful because they are not too adaptive. So what is now the solution to it? I think it's important to think first, what are the goals? So we could, uh, um, we could um, uh, find uh, that thinking first about the goals is the most important thing before you just go ahead. And that's why we do, uh, did this. We defined six goals. One is to standardize complex uh, platforms. Complex means you have um, uh, several hundred of changes in files or also REST um, calls. And this is not only true for WS2, don't mind. Um, it's the same for FileNet, WebLogic, and so on. So the second one is ensure consistency of all stages. Uh, think about that. Um, you have feature three. You forgot them to deploy on uh, stage five. You forgot to deploy um, feature seven to stage nine and so on. So at the end, you end up in a mess. And that's why it is so important to ensure consistency over all the stages. The third one is faster disaster recovery. That's due to legal constraints, but also updating. Believe me, WSO2 people are very smart and fast. They will update their products very fast. And of course, you can omit one, two, or three versions, but if you omit too many versions, it gets really hard to update uh, the platform. 
That's why it's important that updating is very easy. Simple configuration. Think about the platform engineers. They have already enough to do with how to automate uh, platforms. This is also very challenging, but then to think even how to do that, in which language, groovy, shell, whatever, it's not a good deal. So we wanted something which is easy to use. Fast search of adoptions in files. So um, I told you we have more than 1,000, so it's important to be able to compare them because all the products are, um, are similar, and that's why uh, fast search is very important. And finally, simple installation of options such as single sign-on, so you don't need all the single sign-on for every platform. Sometimes you just need a base, and that's it. So our strategy was the following. We took a standard tool, and this standard tool was important for managing the, these 12 stages because we wanted to know which version do we have on which stage and, and so on. So that's why we had the standard deployment tool. And now if I tell you that we took Excel, I know yesterday I, people laughed to me and say, oh, Excel, yes. Are you sure? Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. Remember, I told you Swiss Army Knife is our goal, so to use this installation, it should be very easy, as easy as a Swiss Army Knife. And I can tell you, Axel, everybody here is, knows Axel, also um, people on the street, everybody knows Axel, it's, it's, it's a common standard. Of course, we didn't use plain vanilla Excel, but we highly uh, customized this Excel to do the right job. We added also a meta language. I will come to the meta language a little bit later. And the big advantage is also that we were able to separate the, uh, the data, so the configuration data from, uh, the, um, from st the step procedural steps and this is also a big advantage for us, because then you can also transport them from one stage to another stage in a more easy way. The automation model consists of three elements. We see here the tool configuration deployment. This is important to um, configure the deployment tool. And this is preliminary before you can deploy the platform and configuration. So the second one is the platform deployment. This means you have just a platform which is working, but nothing is on it. So you cannot use it. There is no queue in it, no API in it, nothing. And I told you we have more than 1,000 adoptions to do here, and also 100 um, um, REST calls. The configuration deployment is something different. It requires also several uh, REST calls for that. And we have a component for user rights and so on, one for um, queues and one a component for the car files. So I promised you to tell a little bit more about the math language, and here you see one for the XML. You can just click on one field, and then you get a pull-down menu in the Excel. So what you can do is you can set values, set an attribute, and so on. You can uh, delete nodes, and this is in a really easy way. You just click on it and say which node, it's done. You only need to fill up two columns that's it. You don't have to think about, oh, how should I do that? And um, is it robust? Will it uh, be ex um, recognized the second time, the third time, and so on? No, you don't have to do that. It's all done by this meta language. So this is all about automation. I know I'm, I was only able to scratch a bit the surface, but if you have questions, you can then uh, um, ask them afterwards. 
But before, I want to come to my last, uh, last part, and this is message tracing. So um, maybe, I think that all of you have um, experiences in project. And uh, if something is going wrong, believe me, it's always the middleware. I sent you a message, but we didn't receive an answer. That's the, the most, most often that we, we heard. So what can you do to overcome this problem? I understand this problem because um, it's really tedious and you need really hardcore specialists to find the log files, to find also the, um, to find out which log files are correct, and also to be able to interpret these uh, log files. So, what we did is we did a dashboard for uh, uh, project managers and also for developers. So, we had different searching criteria. One was the source application, the target application, the date, the, the hour, the type of message. So was it successful one, not successful one? You can also um, search for the correlation ID. That means that's an ID which is all over the landscape the same. And you can also combine all of them. So on the right side, you see the steps which are necessary for routing and also the time for it. And this is important because then you can see how the capacity is of this platform and how much time it takes for the target application to answer. And this is very important because normally when people was, uh, were looking for a message which was lost, this was because of the target application. And so we were able to rise the quality of the application because people were more focusing on the development of the application instead of blaming uh, the middleware that it's not working correctly. So here you can also see on the right, or here it's on the left, um, you can click on one message if you get more than one message, and then you see exactly what's going on with this message. Of course, if you want to know more, you can also click on the right pane and you get the details of the log files. So, with this, I conclude my talk. Um, in summary, I can tell you with this approach, with this uh, installation approach, we were very successful. We updated more than six times within less than six months. And before we tried to do that with the standard tool and we were not successful. And also um, when it comes to message tracing, it was really a good tool because after one or two weeks we had much more calm in this project and people could much more um, uh, focus on the development. Um, you remarked that, especially as an architect, that people get more calm and uh, you can also uh, process further and quicker the development. So, thank you again. And if you have any questions, um, the last one is not going here, so I, um, I put the, the two persons uh, which you can ask. One is me and also um, Niels Eckert. Please come on stage because if, it's, if you have some questions which are deep in, in the technique, then he's the chief developer and he can answer you these questions. Thank you. So, Nils, you can wait here to, uh, to answer the questions. Yes. Do you have some questions? Um, yeah. Did you develop a, uh, a dashboard for message tracing 
by yeah. yourself or using WSO2 dashboard products? Um, this is um, on top of the DAS, but we developed it ourselves, yeah. Yes, they were fed in, in the DAS, so everything was in the DAS, but this was also done by development, so um, Niels was um, developing a piece of software which just uh, did, um, did this, this um, log files. Nils, it's up to you. <laughs> yeah. Also, to, to keep it short, what we did is we created some custom publisher that is plugged in ESB in a proxy and sends the event to DAS every time a message comes in and every time a message goes out. And uh, these events are collected by DAS and then aggregated to provide like a summary of the processing was complete or not. Any other questions? Yes? No, sorry. I was taking a picture. Okay. <laughs> Everything is clear? That's great. Okay. Next time, ah, yeah, okay. What are the chances of the dashboard being a standard uh, product with WSO2? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have to ask once because we had uh, a lot of work to do that and uh, maybe this could be one Jack is looking at me maybe you can uh, pick up this this point and um, discuss that within WSU2 we'd, we'd Okay <laughs> Any other questions Okay, thank you.